two, one, because I just feel like that puts pressure on people. So <laughs> I just like to get started just straight up. Yeah, so, let's go. Sure. so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to... But matter of fact, before I even talk, we got shots in front of us. Go. Your shot is kind of light. Yeah. It looks very hollow. Stop, I really had I don't one. know. <laughs> I, how do you feel about that, Priscilla? I don't, I don't know. know. Did you drink some before this? Yes, and I had it in my cup, too. No, uh, she um, poured it in her cup. If you say so, and the other one, too. Ladies and cheating. gentlemen, I want to welcome you out to the elephant pick. And we got we to gotta do it like this. Pa' arriba, pa' arriba, pa' abajo, pa' el centro, pa' adentro. That was rough. Ah. Priscilla's a veteran. She didn't even make Jesus, a face. We just have to. They even make three points, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> lady. I, I usually say ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Elephant Pick, but I want to say ladies. Mm. Ladies, welcome to Elephant Pick. I've been trying to do this interview for a long time, guys, yes. and 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 I had the idea, and it's just funny how life works out. It's like. Damn, I met this person, she's dope. I met this person, she's dope. I met this person, she's dope. And I, if I could just put them all in one place and have them talk, I think it's dope to get the perspective of, of, of the women of the women in nightlife. Yeah. And that's why you guys are here. Welcome to Elephant Pig. Um, Elephant Pig is pretty much my interview series where I like to like interview different people that I feel like need the spotlight on them, whether it's music, nightlife, uh, and, and honestly, anything, honestly. So that this is... Welcome to Elephant Pick. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the space. I, I hope you guys like where we are right now. This is a, this is a club called Panda, oh. which is set to open up uh, February. I don't know exactly when, but big shout outs to the good people at uh, Panda. That's cute. Uh, this is in Harlem, uh, and it, it's a beautiful space. It gives me rustic vibes because mm, of the breaks yeah. and stuff like that. So I just wanted to give, make sure you know I give them a nice plug. It's a music place. So, uh, like I said, welcome to Elephant Pick. My name is Frank Roth, the elephant in the room, Dominican men don't cheat. I don't want to hear no opinions on that. I didn't ask y'all that. I didn't I, I love ask, Dominican men for See, well, well, okay. Why y'all all grab your drinks? Y'all didn't need to do all that. But we anyways, need to sip the tea, cuz. This is, this is terrible. Anyway, so, let's start, let's start here since there's only one person on this side to me, to my right. I want to uh, introduce yourself. Okay. Let the people know who you are, Well, at least let me know who you are, even though I know you are, but <laughs> yes. So, my name is Priscilla Sanchez, and yes. I'm the owner of Crown Society. It's a new entertainment company that I just came up with. Nice. And I've been in the industry for about four years now. And just to be specific, the nightlife industry. Yes, nightlife industry, as a promoter, correct. As a promoter, okay. Mm -hmm. You? My turn. I'm Jamie. Um, I'm a partner at the GMN uh, marketing team. And I've been a promoter for about two and a half years now here in New York. Okay. Yeah. In New York City. Okay. Last but not least. My name is Sinead Ramos. I've been a promoter for three and a half years, um, working in New Jersey with two clubs. Nice. Weekly. Nice, nice. Okay. So what brought you guys to, to nightlife? What, does anybody want to answer first? Feel free to answer whatever y'all want. Like, what, what made you say, yo, I want to mess with the nightlife. I want to be a nightlife. <laughs> For me personally, it was JQ. He was um, the CEO of A-List, um, a promoting company in Jersey. And he reached out to my sister and I, because I have a twin sister, and he was like, hey, you guys have- which I've confused <laughs> A lot times. of times, yeah. Yes. And he kind of just like reached out and was like, I see potential in you guys. You guys can make a lot of money and stuff. We sat down and it's been up since. So a lot of thanks to JQ. Okay, I wouldn't so have done it without him. To JQ. Mm -hmm. Okay, Aww. JQ from Jersey. From Jersey, yeah. Okay, oh, anybody else? I don't oh, know. I just I used to I, I like partying and I was just like, how do I make money off of this? Smart. <laughs> Smart. Smart. Like if people are gravitated to hanging out with me, so how do I capitalize on it? And and here I am. Now you said you promoting in New York. Mm -hmm. so I used means... to be in Florida oh, okay. before for many years, and I would always you know I would do a couple hostings here and there. I did hookah girl, bottle girl here and there, <laughs> but it wasn't for very long because it wasn't like my thing. But when I came to New York, I came kind of like, all right, well, I'm just going to go with a dream. And I'm out, like, I didn't where? have a, a specific route where I was, what I was going to do. Where, where in Florida? Orlando. Oh, okay, Orlando. Okay. Yeah. So up north. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. That's interesting. So? so I started off as a bottle server and a hookah girl. And I would do a little bar whenever they needed me. But I noticed I was pulling in more people than the promoters at the venue itself. Mm. Yep. And at that point, I was like, hmm. And then I was like, can I promote too? So they were letting me promote 
and do all of that at the same time. But then the other promoters felt like it was unfair that I was getting money both ways. Mm. So I was like, okay, I'll stick to promoting. After that, it's been a wrap. Been a wrap. I just went straight forward from there. Uh, went from a hometown um, club. It was like a, like a nice club there. I went from there, and then I went to Lobby to work for CEO Entertainment. That's where I started off. And from there, everything just went up. And then now I own my own entertainment company. So pretty much what I'm hearing is none of you guys said, yo, from the beginning ever, I want to be a promoter. It's just kind of like it happened. happened. Mm -hmm. It did just happen naturally. I feel yeah. like when you have a certain vibe and energy and people are around you and they like to like party with you, and when you're consistent with, hey, do you guys want to come out tonight? Hey, who's, it's your birthday. I'm accommodate you. Get you in for free. You're not going to wait at the door and all of these things. Naturally, people are like, wow, I love feeling that VIP treatment. And then yes. after that, they want to book with you every, every time. single time after that. It's literally that. Mm -hmm. I say that all the time. I'm like, you guys have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Hit them up. Happy birthday. Like, it's a random, hello, how are you doing today? Like, mm -hmm. that's all it takes for them to be like, oh, let me think of Jamie. Oh, where she's at? Where you at today? And that's it. Sometimes you don't even have to hit nobody up. They you just get natural booking. Mm -hmm. Like, I love they just it. be like, yo, where you at? All right, we outside with you. Like, that's it. Yep. You don't have yeah. to do nothing. Sounds pretty easy, right? But I know it's not easy. It's not. It's not. It's not. But, I, but I know it's not it's easy. Not. Um, Especially as a woman in this mm -hmm. industry. I, and and we're, we're definitely going to dig deeper into that. Um, now, let's talk about the one thing that nobody can escape in the entire world, the pandemic. Mm. Um, what have you guys learned about yourselves during the pandemic? Like, how did it, how did it affect you? How did it affect the nightlife for you? Uh, I, whoever wants to start... Well, I feel like it was very difficult, but um, I also realized that anything that I put my mind to, I can do. Damn, because... <laughs> we all drink. <laughs> <laughs> Salud. Mm -hmm. Because the pandemic was tough for a lot of people. Everybody was just like on unemployment. Everybody was chilling. Like, and I was just like, I can't live off of this. Like, what can I do outside of the box that's going to help me? And it's not scamming and it's not uh, none of that. <laughs> I, I didn't even touch that route. <laughs> um, but I was like, I'm going to throw my parties. I'm going to do what I do best. And I'm going to let people have fun during a really horrible time. Mm -hmm. And I surpassed it. So, so what would you say you learned about yourself? The most, like one of the things or the most important thing you learned about yourself? I realized that I work better under pressure and like when when I'm like hitting like the the wall that's when I'm like okay I got this I'm gonna go like nice. don't stop like that right there in that moment where I was like floating <laughs> I'm like I need to survive like how am I doing this I can't keep like just staying still and that that pressure made me like shine more this the pandemic made me get to where I am today Mm. I, I don't think I would have made partner into a marketing company if it wouldn't have been through the pandemic. Like, that showed my shine. Uh, they say pressure makes diamonds. Yeah, 100%. Right? I agree. I right, love Sinead? that. Um, during the pandemic, I think that I just, like, missed, like, posting my flyers. I think that you just, like, get used to posting it all the time. And, like, I would, like, frequently post, like, hey, we'll be back soon or something. Just kind of, kind of like, reminds people, like, so this will, like, oh, be finished in, in, like, a bit. And I think that the hardest part was after the quarantine, like getting nightlife back up, like with all the restrictions that were going on, like capacity and the, the social distancing and everything. People like people, yeah. they were scared. And also it was like annoying to be out with all these things going on, you know what I'm saying? So, and I think that for a minute, I kind of like reconsidered everything. I was like, damn, because with promoting, like there's no stability, like financially, like when things like the pandemic happen, like you don't have that weekly income coming in, you know what I'm saying? But you kind of have to like, be like, nah, like this is gonna be done soon. And you know, the pandemic happens. And after that, like from September to December, nightlife actually picked up and stuff and we were good. Okay, so what would you say is the most important thing you learned about yourself during the pandemic? Because I feel like for a while, everybody was closed in. So we all had to learn things about ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> I think just to like not give up, honestly. Just yeah. You kind of have to just let things flow for the minute and then just not give up. Okay, okay. Brazil? Okay. So every time that my life gets hard, I always say there's a lesson here that God's trying to teach mm -hmm. me. And I'm going to become a better woman because of it. So when the pandemic happened and things were slow, I was like, oh, no. I was like, this is one of those times. 
So I started doing my own Tuesday, imagine a Tuesday party. And my Tuesday party was doing great for a while. Um, and you know, that really like motivated me to be like, you know what? I don't want to work for nobody else. Mm, I want go. to have my own entertainment company. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started really thinking, where do I want to be in the next five to 10 years? Do I want to own businesses? Do I want to have my own entertainment company? And I started really evaluating myself and I started doing work within myself. And I said, okay, I'm gonna, as soon as this is all over, I'm gonna go for everything I want. And I'm actually like the pandemic, obviously what everything that happened is so bad. And you know, obviously people suffered a lot because of it, but for myself, it just really, like took me to the next level and it made me push myself even further. So I would say like that's the true. growth part of it was like the biggest thing for me. And 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 that's the reason why I brought you ladies together. I don't think, uh, maybe you guys see the common denominator here, mm -hmm. but you guys yeah. are fucking hustlers. I you love it. Hustle and, and, <laughs> and, I've, and I've worked with each one of you guys uh, separately and I've seen like, yo, this person is honestly, like, I need to, I need to show, I need to show their story. I need to, I need to expose what it is that you guys do. Because I think women in nightlife are very underrepresented. Yeah. However, I do feel like women are the driving force within nightlife. Do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. Hello. If there's no girls in the club. <laughs> Guys aren't spending. And us girls so, end up and bringing more money. girls. <laughs> I think women, I, I, I would dare to say women are worth double, maybe even triple the amount <laughs> that a guy is worth. 100%. In my life. But they don't agree. <laughs> they don't, don't agree. agree. I, and that's probably why we ended up doing our own thing, like our own businesses mm -hmm. and partnering like with marketing companies because of that. Do you guys feel like there's a, well, it's obvious that, it's obvious that there's a underrepresentation of women in yes. my life. However, I want to know why. It, it's the intimidation of men. Like, if you're not like a very strong woman, you don't know how to be in a room full of sharks. Like, it's just yeah. these men are just like, sit down, look pretty, and shut up. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, that's the feeling that you get. Yeah. That's the feeling that you get when you're mm -hmm. in a room. Like, for me, at least, you know that. I'm I feel the same way. All around guys only. Mm -hmm. Even my, my, my team. Yeah. My team respects me a lot. They, they hold me really high up um, because I, I hold value, you know, but everyone else around is like, well, she's a female, whatever. She's mm -hmm. just, she's emotional, whatever. Like, we don't care. Mm -hmm. Just sit pretty, don't do what you do, and shut up. Like, mm -hmm. that's literally, and it's intimidating for other females because females are like, well, I can't do what he's doing, you know? Like, I don't know what he, how th he does it. You ever had a, you ever had a, 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 a girl come up to you, a woman come up to you and, and tell you that, like, yo, I want to get into nightlife, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. Know. many women. A yeah. lot of girls. Many yeah. women. All like, these guys and, and this, and like, I don't know how to do it. Girl, just be you. Be happy, be lovely. Customer service, like, that's it. So, what what is it? So you guys agree with what she said? I agree, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. What she's saying. You I, maybe it's because I'm I'm a DJ, so I don't see it from that perspective. But yeah. it's like I see a, a, a female promoter, and I'm like, yo, this shit is dope. Yeah. But um, do you guys feel the the pressure to outperform your male counterparts? Not really. I feel I like we stay in our own that. lane, and yeah. we. I do we, what I do. <laughs> exactly. We, I feel like as women, especially to make it in this industry, you have to like not worry about anybody else but what you're doing. Your goal. I don't care what anybody else is doing. I'm just straight. I know my goal and that's where I'm going. Yeah, that's okay. And mm -hmm. I feel like when you start saying, oh, what is that person doing? What is that person doing? That's not going to get you anywhere but hating. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everyone in this room agrees yeah. that we're just, our goal is our goal and that's it. It's Exactly. Yeah, like everybody has their sauce, you mm -hmm. know. So it's like my right. sauce is not like yours, and <laughs> I do what I do. I guess uh, you know, since obviously it's a male-dominated industry, um, do you guys ever see it becoming leveled? Like no, as no. In, no, never. I mean, hello. In the history of ever, no. <laughs> have you seen it be leveled between women and men? We still battle with that in mm. any type of position that you're in. I think that it will be though. And yeah. I think that, like, we're going to start it. like us. At some point, yes, but we're still not I there. I do feel like there's <laughs> going to be yeah. more females in the industry eventually, but just, like, when you guys agree that there are a lot of females have come up to us, 
how many have actually fallen through and actually yeah. done what we do and gone nights where we make 50 bucks to 100 bucks and, and we're, we're like okay what is it. this and yeah, we're okay with they'll it they'll like hit us up about it mm -hmm. and i'll be like hey like you can come join this party and then they'll go ghost or they'll like, try to bring you? out people and they can't really do it and i sit there and i tell them you need to be patient because I was patient for almost a year and a half before I started making real money. Girl, I used to make $50 to $100 a night. Me too? Like, <laughs> literally, a, a party, and I would bring three, four, five tables, yeah. 2K tables. Swear, Swear God, me boy, too. We were sub promoters, so it was the, like they were testing us. Uh, Listen, the most, like, bro, I have more the most than money I, here. I ever made, and I brought like four VIPs, and this was a lobby. I think I made like 300 bucks. <laughs> Four VIPs and in A-Pop. Crazy I mean, amount of money. That. And we don't say nothing. We're just and saying, we don't okay. say nothing. You know what? We eat it up and we say, you know what? We're going to keep going because we see we see how we move. And we see, like, er God sees everything yes. that people do against us. Sure and is. at the end of the day, we're going to get triple that in the future. And that's how I saw it. And I was like, okay, keep going. Because that's you know what? Here. One day, you're going to be making $1,000, $3,000, $4,000 nights. And, and that's go. why we're sitting and at the table. We, and we no? sit pretty and after that. That's what we did what we had to do. <laughs> the elephant in the room, Frank Roth.